when it comes. Thank you. Thank you. We now move to topical questions. Question one, Jenny Murray. To ask the Scottish Government for what reason there has been a reported 300% rise in the number of NHS patients treated in private hospitals. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robbins. Audit Scotland's most recent assessment showed that NHS spending in the independent sector has actually fallen in the last year and represented only 0.8% of the Scottish NHS frontline budget. NHS Scotland makes very limited use of the independent sector for targeted services, ensuring people are seen quickly and so people can get services they need regardless of where they live. With over 1.5 million inpatient and day cases in 2013-14, under 6,500 or 0.4% were treated in the independent sector. Jenny Mara. I think the presiding officer, the cabinet secretary, has to, has to be genuine about this. I believe that that decrease is only a handful of patients, but the truth is that the, the figure is more than four times the amount of tr patients treated in private hospitals than it was a decade ago. Presiding officer, in 2011, the SNP First Minister Alex Salmond claimed that the private sector had been eradicated from the NHS in Scotland. But in reality, we have four times as many patients being treated privately than a decade ago. And on Saturday, Nicola Sturgeon told her conference that SNP MPs will vote to halt the tide of privatisation in England. Should she not start with her own NHS in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, first of all, um, can I say to Jenny Mara that I'm sure she would understand that over the last decade, the number of patients treated overall has massively increased over the last uh, 10 years. But can I also say to her that we have, in our announcement of the new performance fund uh, of £15 million next year, that will have a very direct impact on the level of NHS capacity and will help reduce uh, private spend, particularly in, for example, NHS Lothian. But, you know, presiding officer, I I'll not take any lessons from Labour on this subject. You know, when Labour left office, the UK government private spend in England had risen to 4.4 per cent, and under the Tories it's increased to 5.9 per cent. The equivalent in Scotland is 0 0.8384 per cent, 0 0.84 per cent. I'll also take no lessons given the number of PFI contracts that uh, Labour signed when they were in power in this place, resulting in £235 million being paid out next year for PFI and PPP contracts in the NHS. And finally, the government's position was demonstrated very ably by the First Minister when, as Cabinet Secretary of Health and Wellbeing in 2009, she reversed Labour's privatisation of the Stracathro Regional Treatment Centre and brought Stracathro Hospital back into NHS control. So actions speak louder than words, presiding officer. If actions speak louder than words, pres words, presiding officer, is the cabinet secretary content with the fact that the private provision has risen four times? When Labour left government 10 years ago in Scotland, 1,560 NHS patients were treated privately in Scotland. That figure under the SNP is now 6,417. Does she think that Alex Salmond managed to eradicate private provision from the NHS? When Labour left office in 2006-07, 2,379 patients were treated with uh, the private sector. So you, you need to, your figures you cited were for 2004-05. Labour left office in 2006-07. So you've got the wrong figures. You need to get your figures right. But what is important here is to remember that the number of patients treated over those, uh, those years has also increased. So what we're looking at here is the percentage share uh, of, of patients, given the number of patients have dramatically increased over those uh, years. But can I say to Jenny Mara, I am absolutely not complacent about that, and I want uh, more patients to be treated within the NHS, which is why the £15 million new performance fund will do that by increasing the level of NHS capacity particularly in NHS Lothian, who have the highest spend in the private sector. So that will make a real difference uh, to the amount of money spent in the private sector and we can make a real difference to those patients within NHS Lothian. But I will take no lessons from a government that signed us up to some of the worst PFI contracts, which has left us with a bill of £235 million pounds, uh, next year, much dwarfs the amount of money that has been spent uh, in the private sector uh, 
uh, for patient treatment. It dwarfs that. £235 million. What a legacy from Labour being in power. Jim Pugh. Uh, the SNP should take this 300% rise in NHS patients treated in private hospitals as a stark warning on staff recruitment and retention in our NHS. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that her government's real terms cut in the health budget highlighted last week by Audit Scotland will put further pressure on the NHS to use private facilities and expensive locums, leading to false economies and creeping privatisation under the SNP's watch? And will she provide details uh, of how she will deal with this growing staffing crisis? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I mean, I think Jim Hume gives hypocrisy a, a whole new meaning. I mean, the last time I looked, it was actually the Liberals that were in power with the Tories at Westminster. So let me remind him of the figure. Under the Tory Liberal coalition at Westminster, private sector spend has increased to 5.9% in 2013-14 and is rising. The equivalent figure in Scotland is 0 08 4%. So I'll take, take no lectures from the Liberal Democrats about the use of the private sector when they've propped up the Tories, which are essentially privatising the health service in England, and the Liberals have gone along with that. So we'll not do that here. I can assure Jim Hume of that. Annette Milne. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I have to say I find it pretty depressing that we're once again witnessing the politicisation of the health service by both Labour and the SNP, and indeed the Liberal Democrats. However, can the Cabinet Secretary tell me how many Scottish NHS patients have been treated in private hospitals outside of Scotland uh, since the SNP became the governing party in Scotland, and what has this cost the NHS? Um, Cabinet Secretary. Can I say to Nanette Milne um, that you know, occasionally politics does uh, keep in to these debates, um, but at the end of the day, the most important thing is patient care. We use the private sector, the margins uh, of the, the health service, to make sure that patients who would otherwise have to wait too long get treatment, but it's absolutely at the margins. And we want to uh, do more within the NHS, which is why the £15 million uh, performance fund will help to reduce the level of spend uh, on uh, the, the uh, private sector and increase the amount of spend within the NHS, particularly in areas like NHS Lothian. Um, what I will do on the specifics of the question is write to Nanette Milne with that information and I'll make sure that that happens this week. Question two, Lewis MacDonald. To ask the Scottish Government what discussions took place between the Scottish Funding Council and the University of Aberdeen before the announcement of a £10.5 million budget reduction and the loss of 150 jobs. Minister Alistair Allen. The Scottish Funding Council maintains regular dialogue with all of Scotland's higher education institutions. The Scottish Government understands that there has been no specific discussions between SFC and the University of Aberdeen on the institution's plan to realise £10.5 million of savings through a programme of voluntary redundancy. The Minister will be aware that Aberdeen University believes it needs to make savings on this scale following in part from a decision by the Scottish Funding Council to reduce its research funding by nearly 1.6 million. And this in turn reflected a decision to cease to make any funds available from the Global Excellence Initiative supporting world leading research, a decision which cost the University of Aberdeen in the region of 1.2 million. Was that decision to suspend that initiative taken by the Scottish Funding Council or by the Cabinet Secretary for Education? Minister. Well, just to pick up on several of the points there that were made, firstly, it, it must be uh, emphasised that the Global Excellence uh, Initiative, to which the member refers, was always uh, time limited. Uh, and uh, it should be said, too, that the Research and Excellence Grant, which is one of the uh, other areas of funding that I think he's uh, alluding to there, uh, was awarded on a competitive basis. Uh, I believe that Scotland's universities have had a, a very uh, great deal of support from this government. I think that the record on that stands for itself. I think the very fact that we're giving a, a billion pounds a year to our universities in Scotland proves that commitment. Uh, but it is quite right that decisions uh, that are around the deployment of staff are, are not taken by ministers, but are taken by universities themselves. Minister. I'm very interested in that response, but I want to press the Minister further on the suspension of the Global Excellence in, uh, Initiative and Fund, because naturally I checked back to see what was said by Mike Russell when he launched the fund two years ago. He said simply that it would further boost Scottish output of world-leading research, and a year ago in the Scotland's Future paper on higher education 
research in an independent Scotland, Mr Russell promised that existing levels of government investment would be at least maintained. So when he says that this important initiative, which supported the best research in Scottish universities, when he says that was always time-limited, can he demonstrate where that time-limited uh, element of that fund was published at the time it was announced? Minister. Well, the, the letter uh, I think uh, the member refers to says, while I appreciate it may not be possible uh, to renew uh, funding for the Global Excellence Initiative in next year's initial spending plans, uh, it is my intention uh, that the funds become available, uh, that these are redirected to supporting research informed by the REF results in December. I think it's also worth adding to that that uh, I did speak uh, to the principal of, of, uh, of the University of Aberdeen uh, earlier on today, Sir Ian Diamond, uh, and uh, we did discuss uh, the importance of ensuring that whatever decisions the university takes, uh, they are taken with, uh, uh, the, with conversations uh, with uh, the uh, university staff and trade unions in the uppermost of the university's minds. I would reiterate the point again, which I made earlier on, which is that this government supports our universities. This government has a long record of supporting our universities. And I'm proud to say that the, uh, the University of Aberdeen uh, is an excellent example of that support and action. Liam MacArthur. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Lewis MacDonald referred to the Global Excellence Initiative and the withholding uh, of funding for that uh, over the course of the coming year. It affected obviously more than simply Aberdeen University. Can the Minister advise the Chamber on any conversations that are taking place with other universities uh, who may be forced to consider similar moves in the near future? Minister. Well, I, I, I keep coming back to this point, which is that the, the Scottish Government has uh, shown its support. And the, the point that the, the member, uh, uh, I think, is is, is raising, possibly in relation to Aberdeen, possibly in relation to the other universities. Uh, uh, I think while it's a, a, a debate that we can all have, it does not impact uh, on the, the decisions that have been made directly uh, at the University of Aberdeen, simply because uh, the sums that the, the University uh, of Aberdeen uh, are seeking to redeploy uh, in no way resemble uh, the sums of uh, money uh, involved in fluctuations in the, the grants concerned. Uh, I, I wish to, to emphasise again that the conversation I had with the university principal uh, emphasised the importance of making sure that uh, the university's work, uh, the university's workforce and the trade unions are involved in all the discussions they have about the deployment of their staff in the future. Thank you. That ends topical questions. We now move straight to the next item of business which is a motion, a debate on motion number 12849 in the name of Rob Gibson on the Dairy Industry Inquiry. Members who wish to take part in the debate should press the request speak button.